and welcome back to the Masterclass by Streamworks Audio. My name's Walt, and over the next two hours, we're going to get into Steinberg's Halion in depth. This is a very powerful and complex machine. Uh, you have to sort of rethink how you're going to do sound design to work with it, but once you get there, what this thing is capable of is absolutely incredible. Now, I'm going to start in a strange place for a tutorial video, which is the name of the product. It's Halion, not Halion. And the reason I can say that with so much certainty is that if uh, anyone, anyone out there born before 1975 realizes there's a direct visual analogy between this instrument and the character of the HAL 9000 from 2001, A Space Odyssey. And obviously, Steinberg's doing that for a very specific reason, because in the movie, the HAL 9000 is the most advanced computer mankind has ever seen. He's the, the pinnacle of his type. And they're, they're obviously reaching for that because Halion, as a product, uh, fills most of those same roles. However, this analogy works on another level, too, because if you remember in the movie, uh, Hal starts out great, but then he uh, goes crazy, kills the crew, except for one man trapped inside who slowly loses his mind. And if you unpack Halion and just start poking at it, um, it begins to feel like the same thing is happening. A couple of hours in, it feels like the thing's actually actively trying to work against you. And uh, the whole point of this video is to uh, sort of subdue that feeling and work around it. So when we look at Halion, there's a, there's a mix here. There's good and bad. So let's talk about those pros and cons. Good news first, Halion is incredibly powerful and incredibly flexible, which is great. But that comes at a cost because with that flexibility comes complexity and feeling of slipperiness. And I'm, we'll define specifically what I mean by slippery as we go along here. Halion also has a, a companion piece. The, the Halion Sonic is the, essentially the player version. If you, if you decide that this is too much complexity for you, you can, you can downshift to Halion Sonic, get most of the sounds, a lot of the features uh, without all of the, all of the slipperiness. And then finally, I, I think the thing that most Halion users probably don't realize is that this is actually a complete authoring platform. What I mean by that is Halion 6, unlike any other VST I've ever seen, it comes with all of the content, uh, tool set, and licensing to create your own standalone VST uh, plugins, which you could then you know, distribute to market your brand or even stand up and sell. And if you wanted to do that for any other product, you would have to go to the manufacturer and apply for a software development kit and to get the licensing and all of that. All that stuff is built into Halion. So uh, we'll, we'll conclude with a look at how to do all of that. So with that in mind, the course outline is going to be basically five chunks. Um, in the beginning here, we're going to break through that vocabulary barrier. Kind of get you oriented to the signal flow and how the, how the whole thing works so it doesn't feel quite so slippery. Then we'll briefly look at how to set it up either in the standalone mode or within your, uh, uh, your DAW, and we'll be using Cubase in this case on a Mac. Then we're going to look at in depth how to edit the presets. We'll start there and get our, get our hands around how to uh, uh, use the different editors and so forth with what's already been created. Then we'll move on to creating your own sounds, including sampling, because this thing is also a world-class sampling workstation. And finally, we'll do a, a quick walkthrough of how you go about creating one of those instruments called a macro uh, to package it up and, and distribute. So with all that in mind, let's look at the uh, most common pain points that Halion users uh, generally seem to express. The first is that the terminology is non-standard. I mean, it's not even close. And this is a problem with a lot of VSTs. Uh, unlike a car where the steering wheel always does the same thing in every car you drive, uh, they have different functions and features, and there's no requirement to call the, anything by the same name. And that is even uh, more pronounced with Halion because they've, they've really gone off uh, uh, further uh, in their own direction. The second, in my opinion, the layout is a little too flexible, uh, and we'll talk about that and how to avoid it. There is um, a fundamental break with sort of traditional user interface in that there's no direct connection between visibility and functionality. And what I mean by that is you can hide stuff completely and it's still running. If you can't even see it to edit it, it can be a little bit hard to turn on or off something that's, that's doing stuff in the background that you don't want it to. Uh, you can have multiple instances of everything. And that includes like the little keyboard at the bottom. You can have one of those, you could have two of those. You, you can have 22 of those. You could fill your whole monitor up with little keyboards. Uh, and again, that's, uh, as long as you're aware of it, you can work around it. That sort of capability is there, I think, to support the authoring tools that we'll be looking at in the end. Uh, but it'll drive you nuts if you don't know, one, how to, 
avoid it, and then two, how to fix it if you accidentally do that. And along those same lines, Halion allows you to put any window, anywhere, any size. And uh, same thing, you can sometimes you can just click and drag your mouse, you know, bump your mouse and end up with a, a window that's been floated out and sitting in a strange place. And so we'll look at how to avoid that and then how to fix it if it happens. So when we uh, first look at Halion, it's, it's a little bit visually confusing. It doesn't really look like a traditional synth. Uh, in fact, it looks closer to a spreadsheet than an instrument to a, a lot of people. So the basic lay of the, the land here is that along the top, you have your system controls. And that's the one part that's fairly universal and fairly locked down, and they always do the same thing. Then in the, in the default window set, generally along the bottom is where you're going to have your performance controls, unless you go out of your way to create seven sets of quick controls or nine sets of pads. Uh, these are pretty easy to uh, interact with, and they will stay there and behave themselves if you don't actively change that. Then we have got three areas in the middle here, and those are the slot rack, the editors, and the program tree. The way I want to have you think about that is your slot rack, you could think of as a bookshelf or a display case. This is essentially where your finished items are going to go. Then on the right-hand side, the program tree really works like a blueprint. This is where you're going to architect the layout of your sound. Uh, it's where you get your raw materials. And then the center is really your workbench. This is where you've got most of the buttons and knobs and controls to uh, adjust and edit everything that you've built into your blueprint. And then down in the corner, if you don't move it or hide it, you have uh, basic administrative functions. You've got your history tree and the ability to, to grab blank programs that start working. So that is essentially the, the major layout of Halion in its default configuration. And those are the three sort of main areas in the middle that we're going to be working with. So that's a view of the, the user interface with the basic functions organized by area there. So. Let's get into the actual structure, clear up some of that vocabulary, and then we'll begin working with this thing. You have essentially these three primary container chunks. Sort of the biggest area of uh, a sound, the highest level is a preset. That's going to save the whole instrument. Presets made up of program, a program or many programs. Each program's made up of layers. But these in and of themselves don't make sound. They don't do anything. They just hold other stuff. And inside each layer, you're going to have a zone and a bus at a minimum, and in most cases a MIDI controller. And of these, the zone is the heart of the whole thing. A zone is what makes the sound. That's where it all begins. The bus is how it moves around. That's your routing. And MIDI controllers do all kinds of cool stuff. You can, we'll get into that. Uh, but if you think back to a really traditional synth where it starts, uh, you know, over on the left with an oscillator and becomes more complex as it moves to the right, here we're going to start on the right with a zone, and it bounces all over the place, becoming more complex as it forms a layer. Layers are grouped together into programs and then programs into presets. So if we zoom in a little closer on how those actually sit in the, the user interface up at the top, that's where your preset selection is. Anything that you load there is going to, is going to trickle down and affect the entire uh, instance of Halion. The slot rack is where you park your programs, and you can have one to... I think it's like 40-some programs stacked up there. And then over in the program tree is where you will see your layers, your zones, and your MIDI controllers. And that's your bus. And this, the one we're looking at on the screen here is the, the default factory preset hexagon that every, I think every user out there hears as soon as they load the program. So let's drill down a little deeper on the, the, the three big actors, because again, the blue stuff here are containers, the yellow stuff is active. So on a layer, which looks like that on the icon, is your basic building block. And again, it's container file. This, this is, uh, you're going to create a layer, and then you're going to start putting stuff in it to, uh, to make whatever sound you want. Uh, you have a MIDI module that actually sits above the layer and controls how it's played back. And there are 16 different types of these, and we'll look at those at the end, but they're, they're more like frosting. I want to get into the meat of the sound first. I just mixed my metaphors. We're now putting frosting on meat. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Uh, then at the very core, like I said, are these zones, and that's the icon for it. And this is your basic sound source, and there's five different types of zones. And uh, if anybody's familiar with architectural drawings, uh, that symbol, the black and white wheel, is, is also the, the drafting or architectural symbol for center of gravity. And I think that was very well chosen in this case because the zone really is the center of gravity. 
um, for the instrument, for each sound, that's where it, that's where it all begins. So um, when we look at zones, there are five different types. And when you drop down the, to create a new zone, this is the, the drop down window you're going to get. You can make uh, your zone start with a synth. And that's a traditional subtractive synth. Uh, you can use a sample to start off your sound, a granular synthesizer. They have an organ and a wavetable. So those are your different uh, points of departure when you're starting to, when we get into how to create a sound or if you want to tweak one. And when you, um, when you bring these each into existence, this is the same window with all five of those added. You can see in the same order, synth zone, sample zone, granular zone, et cetera. And those are the associated uh, icons. And the two that are in uh, yellow there are, are telling you that the, the stuff behind it is empty. So we've created a sample zone in this display, but we haven't uh, put a sample into it yet. And then you have editors, and there are about 25 of these. And these are what make up the, the workbench, the center of the instrument. And this is how you're going to control, tweak, and adjust those zones. This is a perfect example of what I mean by non-standard nomenclature because the sample editor, for example, as we'll see, looks like a sample editor. That's, that makes sense. But that mini keyboard at the bottom and the quick controls, those are classified as editors too. And I, that can be really confusing because uh, anyway, we'll, we'll sort of knock those down as we come to them. But that's the, the basic toolbox that you have on that workbench, um, that you, all the things you can bring into existence to help. Uh, make that zone, do what you want to do, and sound how you want it to sound.